Hey guys, nothing to. Right, <sighs> going into the Lone Wolf series again. So, this is the first one of many. Just trying to bait my drink. Yes, dope it up, by the way. Right, okay. Going back into this Lone Wolf series. And I'm just going to be up, up front and then coming out with it. I know I'm inside, I get that, I understand that, but yeah. Right. Can everybody become a lone wolf? Quick, simple answer is no. Not everybody can be a lone wolf. You can work on your own, but you can't, in my opinion, become a lone wolf. You have to have the mindset of knowing that it's just you. You cannot just go into the atmosphere and go, oh, yeah. I'm basically going to be doing, I'm just going to do this. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to do that. Like, with me, I know I've got her, I get that. I know people say, oh, you're not technically a lone wolf because you've got a dog, you're not on your own. But she can't gather water. Yeah, she can't, she can't collect water, she can't collect food, she can't collect firewood. Well, she can, but she'll just nick it instead. Um, she, she carries her own stuff, don't get me wrong. She does carry some, she does carry some small bits of my kit. As well, some spare bits. But you've got to understand, you've got to make sure you've got everything you need in your rucksack to become a lone wolf. You've got to have the mindset knowing that you're in charge of your shelter, you're in charge of your food gathering, you're in charge of the collecting the water, you're in charge of making sure you cook and eat, you're the person in charge of your perimeter. You have to do all of it compared to when you're in a group, you have to do it. You can split the jobs up daily. So one day you could be collecting firewood, then the next day you could be going and get the water, or the next day you could just be sitting around doing the food, and the third day you could be on patrol, or fourth day you could be on patrol. Right of your perimeter. But being a lone wolf, you have to do everything yourself. And that's why I state, personally, in my opinion, there's no such thing as a bug out location. Especially if you're a lone wolf, you have to move practically every other day or maybe every night or every day. You can't stay in one spot for too long because if you stay in one spot for too long, you get settled, you get comfortable, you don't want to move on again and you won't want to do anything. I get that, I understand that. I know a lot of people like being settled. I know a lot of people want to be in one spot and want to have one thing. But for me personally, this moment in time, I don't think it's a good idea for a lone wolf personally because you're more likely to get robbed, you're more likely to get attacked, you're more likely to get stuff stolen from you. You could go and get water and you leave your rest of your kit all up where you're going to get, after you've gone to get water, you're going to get water, you left the rest of your gear, you get your all in, your bag and everything, and I go, oh, you can't site. Then you're going to go and get water. To me, that's the worst thing in the world to do as a lone wolf as well. You take all your kit to get water. You don't just leave kit at the camp, at your site. You take everything. That's the other problem people don't like with being a lone wolf because it's more work. It is a lot more work for one person. It's going to take me maybe an hour to collect water because I'm carrying my kit. It might take me an hour to go and collect fire around to get firewood if I need to have a fire. That's the other thing as well. You cannot have a big fire because that's a big silhouette. It might look like it, you might say, oh, but it might look like I've got a group of people. But then they're going to get angry. Then you're going to get the other people who's got gangs of people thinking, oh, there's a group over there. That means they got supplies. That means they might have food. That means I need, that means we can go and get that food and take that food from that group. So if you get my point, it's more work being a lone wolf because you've got to carry all your kit all the time. You've got to keep moving. You can't stay in one spot. For too long maybe two nights maximum in my opinion i've got a friend as you know who's homeless he stays in a spot less than three nights roughly he said maximum for him is three or four nights maximum but then he says to me he told me the other day that he got too comfortable in that one spot and that's why he stayed there for three or four nights because he was comfortable and he said that's when he got into trouble because people knew he was there was there because you can't hide in that one spot as well as not having known people not knowing you're there if that makes any sense because people are going to travel people are going to see when you go in people are going to know when you go out everything like that so 
don't get comfortable if you're a long wolf. That's my opinion. And as well, guys, yeah, things like a mobile phone as a long wolf, junk, rubbish, waste of time, waste of money. Don't carry it. This is my opinion, by the way. This is no one else's. This is my opinion. Mobile phones as a long wolf, I won't even carry that if anything happens. I won't even carry radios if I was a long wolf because there'd be no point. Yeah? You're carrying a mobile phone? Why? Yeah, you're not going to be able to pick up the phone and ring somebody. And I know people keep going on about, oh, EMPs, I can put this in one of those EMP bags. Yeah, you can put that in an EMP bag, but it's still going to be a dead weight for you. That's a different subject altogether, and I'm going to get off that subject right now. But go back onto the Lone Wolf series. Um, well, Lone Wolf, um, would, as everybody, would everybody be a Lone Wolf? Well, as I said, the answer to that is no. It's mindset. I've lived on my own for nearly five. Hang on. Nearly 14 years I practically knew I've lived on my own. Not 100% 13 years or 14 years. Looking on maybe out of those 14, you're looking on maybe 11 or 12 years where I've actually been on my own. And that doesn't include with her, guys. That just means when I was with a partner, when I was living with somebody else and living, with some, living somewhere else. It means I've lived in this flat nearly 10 years. So let's just say 10 years. I've been on my own for 10 years in this flat. Yeah. That means I'm com that means I'm not I'm comfortable in this flat. And that means I'm too comfortable. So yeah, it if you live on your own, then you you can you can cope. But it's harder. You live in a group, you live with two to three people, and then you want to become a lone wolf, it'd be ten times harder because you're separating yourself from a group. You're separating yourself from people. You're not hearing people's voices every day. As soon as you start hearing voices, people's voices, then that's where you get settled. You're starting to work as a group. As soon as you start working on your own and start living on your own and being on your own, that's when you start basically. As I was saying, guys, when you live on your own, you get used to things. When you live in a group, you get used to things. You get used to someone, like if you live in a group and you live in a, you live in a family unit, like you get your parents cooking your tea. When you live on your own, you've got to do that on your own. You've just got to do that. So if you get what my point is, if you are going to move from a group to a lone wolf, it's going to take time. Don't expect it all to happen overnight. Yeah, Being a lone wolf, as I said, not everybody can become a lone wolf. No one in a million years can every single person become a lone wolf. Because, as I said before, it's way too much work. It a lot more mental mindset. Your mind has to be set in that aspect, knowing you're not going to hear another person's voice. Yeah, I could be in this flat for maybe two days, two three days, and I don't hear another soul. I don't hear another voice. I don't talk to anybody else apart from her, and she's not going to answer me. If she did, I'd freak out even more. But you know what I mean. You're not going to hear voices. You're not, and. You're not going to hear other people's voices. You're not going to hear someone saying to you, Oh, mate, do you need this? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, mate, 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 we got this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Oh, mate, we went hunting and we, we got all this. You're not going to get that as a long wolf. So I'm hoping this makes sense to people. I do apologise if it doesn't. But it's just something that's been on my mind for a bit. And I'm just happy. I just want to do this more of this series. I know, as I said before, and I know I said earlier in this video, that a lot of people say long wolves are good as dead. Let me show you how long wolves are not good as dead, and let me show you what I can do, what I've been shown, what I've been taught, and what I've been taught by so many different people, and what I've learned for myself, and how I've done it on my own. I've done a lot of camping on my own before, I've done a lot of survival stuff on my own, I've done a lot of bushcrafting stuff like that all on my own. So let me show you more on how to become a long wolf and the first steps. And the first steps, in my opinion, is good kit. And it's good clear good clothing and shelter kit. And when I mean shelter kit, I don't mean tarp one and I mean clothing. So that will be the next long wolf part of the series. Guys, will be the clothing. I will be showing you what I wear. So thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.